I just don't understand it. Like, I don't I don't get where all of this kind of came from. Like, how did KD become labeled like that guy? Well, it start, I think it started with the whole burner thing. Hank McCoy. Hank McCoy. And that's the thing that people misconstrued with that, too, is the only bit of reporting in what Woj said was that, you know, sources tell me that Kevin Durant is frustrated. And from then on, all of the things that he said were Woj's own interpretation of the mm-hmm. situation. They weren't from Kevin Durant directly or even yeah. from the people that Katie had talked to about that frustration, which, again, was natural at that point in time. So you're right. Like people lean into this narrative because they have this view of Kevin Durant that's pretty unfair to be honest like I'm sorry but if I was in his shoes in Brooklyn I would have wanted a trade out of that situation too I'm not trying to waste what's left of my prime you know with Harden forcing his way out and then Kyrie being a knucklehead the whole time like (laughs) that you can't help that situation you can say what you want about him joining the Warriors whatever if you don't like watching fun basketball I get it but I just I feel like there's this misperception and and you nailed it. Like he said, people don't talk about me as a student of the game. They don't talk about how I'm a good teammate or how I love the game. They talk about how I'm I'm, I'm miserable. I'm insecure. I'm a bad teammate, all this other stuff. And it's really unfair to him because yeah. if you listen to the man actually speak when he answers questions about basketball, you can tell how much he loves it. You can tell how knowledgeable he is about the game. But nobody ever goes for those clips. They have to wait yeah. for him to address these stupid rumors and mm-hmm. all this other crap for him to be in the headlines. What bothers me, though, is Pop has an attitude about things, can be kind of gruff. He does it, everybody thinks it's funny. KD has an attitude yeah. like that. He's a problem. He's a he's a malcontent. He's yeah. this or that. Mm-hmm. There's a weird double standard in the league about a lot of yeah. stuff. Like that. Which, and, and I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead Lance. I just don't understand it. Like, I don't, I don't get where all of this kind of came from. Like, how did KD become labeled like that guy? Well, it start, I think it started with the whole burner thing. Like, yeah. that was the first time that people started looking at KD and was like, oh, wow, like, he's ultra sensitive or this, that, and the third. That kind of opened it up. And then I, I honestly think the Golden State thing is where it really shifted. Mm-hmm. A lot of people had uh, bad feelings about what he did. And I always viewed this as, listen, one, he was a free agent. Mm-hmm. Two, he went to a team that although had one of the best seasons ever, they had just lost in the finals. So mm-hmm. they didn't, they, they weren't coming off a championship. And, you know, I hate the narrative that he went to Golden State and got two rings. Mm-hmm. I saw every damn minute of that run. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you what, I, I don't believe Golden State wins those championships yeah. without Kevin Durant. I think he was the mm-hmm. best player on that team. He was the best player in the finals. And Steph probably doesn't have as many rings as he has without Kevin Durant. So the whole that whole narrative got kind of thrown out of proportion. Mm-hmm. I think Kevin did what he had to do. He got his two rings and he left. People don't want to give him credit for it, and that sucks. No, they treat him like Gary Payton going to the Lakers. Yeah. Or Charles Barkley going to the Rockets at the end of their career. Right. When this guy made a dis- business decision in his prime and did exactly what he was supposed to do. Go win rings. Yeah. And so uh, very much I think it, it's not that dissimilar to people who either have a beef with Devin Booker because they didn't think he was going to be anything and he turned into something or because of the 70-point game. Whatever it is, it's a similar kind of mindset. People just have something that they want to believe and they find anything to validate that belief. Well, and the goalposts yeah. keep moving with him too, because when he was in OKC, we, we have these expectations of players that they're always supposed to be loyal yeah. to the team that drafted them. They're supposed to stick with the same franchise forever, bring them titles, all this stuff. And, and that is really cool when it happens. But, but it's like, rare. Yeah, it's rare. And what were we saying the whole time when he was in OKC? We were saying, man, the Thunder really messed up by trading James Harden. <laughs> man, <laughs> they broke a dynasty. Man, Russell Westbrook is holding KD back. Man, like KD needs to win a ring or we're going to view him in a different light. Yeah. So what does he do? He joins the best possible situation for him where he can win those rings. He does. And then we're saying, oh, well, this is unfair. It's cheating the system. Right. Like those rings don't count. And, and so he leaves yeah. and he goes to Brooklyn to try and do something there. And then because his teammates are both like malcontents, yeah. he's the one that gets blamed for it somehow. So he goes to another good situation and every step of the way, Kevin Durant has done something to not directly to counter what's being said about him, but people have changed why they're going to criticize him. And KD didn't build a big three here. He right. wasn't the one that that said, "Hey, you know what? 
I'm going to go trade for Bradley Beal. <laughs> yep. Right. Those were other people that decided that. So don't hold that against him either. Right. And you know, yeah. it's another thing that people don't talk about enough. The year Kevin Durant went to Golden State, he was a free agent. That was the year that the CBA changed and they had that crazy bump up in TV money. Mm -hmm. And it gave teams that would never have enough cap space to do something, to do something, mm -hmm. right? And so you're talking about a guy that was probably going to leave OKC anyway. And then all of a sudden, magically, the best team in basketball has enough money to bring you in. Now, I, I, everybody that wants to talk, they can talk. Mm -hmm. But I'd be damned if I'm going to be a free agent and I'm looking at potential destinations and all of a sudden the sexiest most beautiful destination just opens up and you want me to say no to that? Like, mm -hmm. no one would do that. There's no one. I don't think there's a player in basketball. That that situation would never happen again, though. Well, I don't know. It may, it may happen yeah. again. But it was such a rare situation that I think if you take, you know, 99% of the stars in this league and make them free agents and the best team in basketball has the ability to, to bring them in, I'm not buying that they're going to pass up because they want to do this or do that. They're going to go there and do the right thing. That's what he did. Yeah, and if you want to criticize his game and certain things, I'm, I mean, you're nuts, but I'm all <laughs> I'm all for it. Those are, that's fair. That's what you sign up for uh, when you're out there as an athlete. You want to question, can he get it done as 1A, as the, the main leader? Fine. But this other stuff... Give the guy a damn break with it. Yeah, and that's the thing is, like, I've, I've even criticized him this year because, like, he touched on the body language thing from the Christmas Day game. Like, objectively speaking, his body language was not good in that game. Mm -hmm. So was everybody else's. Right. And I think for him, part of the leadership is realizing that his body language, the way he reacts to things, has a real effect on the guys around him. But, like, he owns up to those types of things. And it's never, when we, even when we criticized him, it was never, like, Katie's a bad teammate. Like, he's, he's ruining the culture here, yada, yada, yada. It was, he's frustrated. They need to work themselves out of this funk. And they need to have better body language because it can be infectious with a new group of guys. Yeah. 100%. And especially when it's somebody at the level of a Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. right? Like, how? Look at, uh, who was it? Met, uh, Bobo? Bobo? Bobo just recently was like, I get to be a, t a teammate yeah. with my favorite player growing up. Yeah. Like, Book looked up to KD. Like, all of these younger guys on this team look at him as like, you are what I want to be. You right. are what I've always yeah. wanted to right. be when I was growing up. So it does have an impact on them. And it's it's things like that where it's like, KD's got to understand how big of a name and just being he is within this space. Can I just, one last thing, you just brought something up that kind of made me think of something. You know, when they were doing that little round table interview, uh, Brad Beal, Book, and KD, they asked him for his Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. And he said, Jordan, Kobe, LeBron. And then he stopped and he paused, mm -hmm. sat there for a minute. And Devin Booker had to say, you, bro, <laughs> Kevin Durant, bro. <laughs> like, so... Again, that's a guy, he could have easily been one of those guys and said, Mike, Cole, LeBron, me. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. And and so you got guys like Devin. But that's the part that I think is something I want to talk about later on. But, you know, I think that's part of the adjustment, guys. Okay. It's, you know how hard it is to play with your favorite player?